this will be recorded so that it'll, we'll be sending out those who we want it to uh, a link to the recording. But without further ado, Oren, Beth, take it away. George, thank you so much and uh, happy to be here this Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, and as we have in every session, feel free to type questions uh, through this webinar, but it's better to put yourself muted uh, for uh, better uh, audio. Um, and let's start with our objectives for today. Um, it's a very special webinar today because Crystal Reports uh, can do a lot of things for your business. The idea is for today to provide the basic tools for you to be able to either modify existing layouts or even create new uh, crystal reports, uh, being able to see visualization, being able to see graphs and charts. Um, maybe it's, uh, we, we'll try in this session during this hour, basically to give you all the tools you need to be self-sufficient with uh, crystal reports and uh, the ability to educate yourself further uh, with uh, extra tools and, and more depth and, uh, and, and expertise around uh, crystal reports. Thanks so much, Oren. Um, so as he mentioned, going along with our goals here, um, we have, we just wanted to kind of present the agenda of what we're gonna um, show you guys today. So first of all, uh, we're gonna just give you a little bit of background and intro into crystal reports. We're going to go into everything you need to start a crystal report from scratch, give you a holistic view of what crystal reports are and how you can get them started. Um, and then my favorite part, we're gonna show you how to create some visuals with your crystal reports. Um, after that, we're going to discuss parameters and tokens. We're also going to show you how to put golden arrows into your crystal report. So um, you guys, I'm assuming, should be aware those same golden arrows that you see in SAP, we can actually put those into the crystal report. Uh, we're also going to touch on commands, views, and stored procedures, and then provide you with some documentation so you can start creating and updating crystal reports yourself. Um, and then we have some time for Q&A at the end as well. Thank you, Beth. So a little bit about Crystal Reports. So um, it's part of um, business objects, which uh, SAP acquired several years ago and incorporated into their ERP products, uh, SAP Business One included. So as part of your SAP Business One suite, whether if you have one users or 100 users, you get um, a Crystal Report Designer license to be able to uh, modify reports, layouts, and things of that nature. It's a very robust tool. It probably can do everything and anything in terms of uh, how to present your forms, invoices, sales orders, things of that nature, and create uh, executive reports to make better business decisions. Um, sometimes it's a little bit harder to modify versus PLD or, or the traditional tool of SAP Business One, but it does give you a lot of options of what you could do. And um, we'd like to present some of those uh, during today's session. Um, what can Crystal Report do? So a couple, a few things that SAP incorporated as part of uh, Crystal Reports for SAP Business One. So in SAP Business One, they created the Crystal Reports Viewer. This is basically the viewer that allow us to view different Crystal Reports. Uh, there is the Report and Layout Manager, which allow us to be able to import and export Crystal Reports. And there is the Crystal Reports Add-in for Business One that allow us to preview. Probably a sign that I'm talking too much. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Amanda, that was you, so I muted uh, your session. Um, and then the Crystal uh, Reports add-in within uh, Crystal Reports that allow you to save uh, forms in SAP Business One and to preview within SAP Business One. So that's all for the intro because we'd like to um, drill down and start here. Sorry, what was that? So with that being said, we're gonna move forward with what is Crystal Reports and how it looks and how, how to start. 
most, uh, the best way to show this is just to jump right into the Crystal Report software. Um, so to give you guys just a little bit of an overview about everything you're seeing on the screen, we have here up in our menu, um, this is the same as most standard Windows-based applications in your menu. You have all your file options, insert, format, um, all of those same things. So that should be probably the most familiar part of this uh, interface here. We also have, um, if you'll see down here, the report section. So this is where we're gonna be building our report, putting all the fields in. Um, as you can see here, we have our details section. So this is going to be the repetitive details section where maybe you have your sales order detail lines, your items, quantity, price, all of that. Um, then we have the page header, which um, is going to show you all of the information at the beginning of every page. And then your report header where you may wanna put a logo, um, any of that information you just wanna see one time. And then the same here for your footer information. We also have here on the right-hand side, this field explorer. So this is gonna be your best friend when you're building the crystal reports. We'll have everything, um, all of our database information that we're pulling in, any formulas, parameters, um, that's all going to be kept right over here. And then our other best friend when we're building this crystal report is going to be um, a lot of the items up here. So we're gonna talk about our grouping, um, our summary options, some filtering options here, and then some sorting options. So um, those are probably the best tools in your toolbox for starting to create a crystal report. Perfect. And then um, as we uh, want to start building a new report, first, we're not going to talk today about the installation of Crystal Report. That, that normally takes half hour to an hour, and that could be done by IT professional. But the idea is that to talk about Crystal Reports today. So as we look at uh, Crystal Report, the first thing we want to do is to start a, a new report. And um, we can start with either file new or going from here to database expert. In this case, I'm gonna start with file new and we'll see the different options. We have a blank, uh, blank report or we have a standard report or we have a standard report basically goes through some kind of uh, wizard. I'm gonna start with a blank report and um, we can see that we have uh, different uh, connections. I already have a connection, so I'm gonna go directly to this database and you can see that I have DBO, which is all the uh, basically uh, tables, views, and stored procedures, which we're gonna talk about later. Right now, we're gonna start with uh, tables. As you create a new connection, uh, just so you know, you have multiple uh, options to connect to. You could connect to SAP Business One, which will show us the tables in the uh, format of uh, Business One. And then you could also do ODBC, uh, or you can also do uh, other connection types that are uh, SQL type, okay? In this case, uh, what you see here with the, uh, my connections already exist, we used uh, OLEDB, and uh, basically chose all the tables and view. And, uh, we're gonna start maybe with querying um, the orders table, ORDR. So if I don't wanna uh, scroll down, I can just type ORDR. Um, we know that it's the orders table. If we ever wish to know, you know, what are the tables and how do I know a sales order is ORDR, we can go to SAP and by viewing uh, system information, if we go to a sales order and we hover over every field, you could see at the bottom left of the screen that it shows us ORDR is the table, and then next to that is the card name. If I move and hover over a different field, like the posting date, it will show ORDR dog date. So ORDR is the table of the sales order, the header, and we also have the lines RDR1. But no further SQL for today. Uh, I'm gonna uh, choose the ORDR to the table. I can choose also other tables if I wish, but for this uh, example now, we're gonna uh, 
uh, continue with that. And then uh, after I add a table, all our tables and fields within the tables are going to reside under the database field. Now that we're in here, we want to pull in some information from our ORDR table. Um, so let's say just at a base level, we want to pull in our customer card code here. We can put that up in the header um, and the card name. And actually, let's put the card, uh, that information down here. And let's say we want to pull in our doc total information. There we go. Now, what you're going to notice that as you uh, drag and drop fields from the right side to the left side, if you drop it in the details areas, it's automatically going to create a header for that title as well. Just a quick way to build a report dropping and dragging uh, the information from right to left. Absolutely. So we pulled in some just basic information here. I've pulled in our business partner code, our business partner name. We're also pulling in our document date, um, a document status, and then our doc total. So now the fun part about this, um, that we've just pulled in some basic information and we can actually already preview how it looks. So we'll just go to view and then print preview and it'll build us a report. Now this is just building uh, it's essentially a data dump. So of everything we have, it's pulling everything from our database. Um, so let's say now that maybe we want to filter this doc status here. So we can go up here to our select expert and say, okay, well, how about for doc status? We just want to see our open orders. So we're going to create an open order report. So let's say here we want our ORDR doc status equal to open. And you saw here we have the open and closed options. So now we'll say OK. And let's refresh the data. And now you'll see we can scroll through our report. Everything that we have in here now is all open orders in the system. Um, you can also see maybe on this doc date, there's uh, you have the date and time. Well, let's say you don't really need to see the time, that default system time. Um, so we'll just click here. Right click, say format field, and let's go with that. So just different ways of cleaning up the report. Um, you'll also notice here there's a hash number. So that means that the number is too long for the field that it's in. Um, so right from this preview view, we can still edit the report. And let's say we'll make um, that a little longer. And now we don't have any hashed views there. Um, and now let's say if you have this open orders report, you just want to see it organized by customer. So right now we have kind of this data dump of just open sales orders. But instead, yeah. let's say we want to see all of our maxi tech together, all of our SG electronics together. So we can go right over here to this record sort expert and say, let's sort the field ascending by card name. So now everything's in alphabetical order. Yep, and you can always move between a design mode to a preview mode, and you can have multiple reports open on your screen. So design, preview, and you can do a lot of things from both. A um, couple of other things about the uh, structure. Now we could also have the dollar sign if we wish, so we can display the currency. So we can play around with things or we can say, okay, highlight doc total that are greater than 10,000 and things of that nature. So you can do a lot of design things here um, if you wish, or I can mark the whole line if I wish by uh, highlighting everything and say format object. And then I can say um, the uh, border maybe, or the font, or I can change anything here, but I can say maybe the background, customize it. I wanna have um, you know everything that is greater than 10,000 show me uh, in different color, okay? So this is where we could uh, do these things, but we're gonna talk about it a few minutes down the road when we talk about formulas. 
but if I just want to highlight one field or to make it in a different color, that will be the same place. Or we go to the uh, border and say, I want to have the background being uh, yellow. Preview to see how it looks like. Wonderful. Um, so now let's say we have a lot of data here. I think we have, yeah, five pages of data. Um, so let's say we just want to see it summarized by customer. So here we can put in um, where I mentioned earlier, this insert group. So um, let's group it together by card name. So now if you look in the report, not only is it organized here, but now we have these different groups for all these different customers. Well, for the different groups, we probably want to create some kind of summary so that we can see all of our open doc totals, um, the sum of that for each customer. So if we go over to this summary, the insert summary um, right on the top left, we can click there and say, okay, for ORDR doc total, we want to calculate the sum. Um, there are a heap of other options here if you want to pull out maxes, averages, those kind of things. But for our case, we'll wanna just do the sum. And then we wanna add this to all group levels. So that's important since we've made um, a few groups here with all of our different business partners, we want to add the sum to all of the group levels. So we just click okay. And now you'll see that we have our summary data here. So let's say now that we just want to see all of our BPs and all the summaries without all these details. You just want to see an overview of your dollar amount for your open orders. So we can go back to this design tab here and all of these details in this details section, let's say if you right click, um, we can hide these details. Now you might notice there's a uh, two options here, there's hide and suppress. So they're going to do essentially the same thing, except for um, if you choose hide, you're able to drill back down into the details. So it kind of creates a little bit of a sub report there. So let's click hide and see how that looks. So if we go back over to preview, now we've hidden all of that information. And if we double click right here where our um, details were, we can open up all of those details sections. So it is helpful if you do want to leave that in there. Um, for our cases, we're going to go ahead and move this up here so we can have a little bit of a cleaner look to it. And then we can also go ahead and delete this group footer just to put all our data together or in this case, suppress it. So now we have a more clean looking um, data set here that we can build a visual off of. Um, so, Oren, is there anything you wanted to touch on before we build a little basic chart? Um, yeah, maybe a um, couple of other options that we want to show you. Um, simple things, but, you know, if we want to add uh, text or any, you know, logo and things of that nature that will be here, we're going to add a text and we're going to call it um open sales orders in this case and then we can do everything you know uh microsoft word is doing to highlight to increase it to have it in a different color to do underline things of that nature mm -hmm. <clears throat> in addition we have uh, a bunch of uh, special fields we could use so if we want to add uh, for example the date and time, um, we could um, uh, send it. If we want to have page numbers, we could put it probably better on the page header because it's repeating every page. So all kinds of pre-made uh, fields that we can uh, use. Uh, print date, for example, I can bring here print date. I can use my arrows and, sh and control in arrows to move it or shift to increase the size, and then I can add another uh, text field that is gonna be saying print date. And then of course, if we wanna align it, we can use that or we can mark both of those, those two fields. And um, then we could do right click align tops. That helps with a lot of the uh, design issues. 
And then if we want to bring up a picture, um, you know, we could use uh, this one, insert picture in order to bring, uh, for example, a logo or things of that nature. And then your report looks uh, much better. So with that being said, I think everybody ready for the visualization. Wonderful. Um, so for the visuals, we're going to start right up on this insert. Um, on the top menu, there's this insert, and we'll say insert chart. So it's going to give you, if you see the highlight here, um, going to give you the size of your chart to start out. I would recommend putting it in the report header for now, and we can always move it. Um, so it looks like, if you notice, we put it in the report header, header and it covered our title there. So we can go back to our design tab and let's just make this report header a little bit bigger to give ourselves some space. We can grab our chart, pull it down, and if we go back to preview, now it looks a little bit better. Um, but there's still some things that maybe we want to update. So uh, if you right click on this chart here and go to chart expert, you see um, this first tab, you have all of your different types of charts that you can create. So bar charts, line charts, pie charts, um, all of that good kind of stuff. So let's say maybe we'll want to create a pie chart instead. And we can go back to chart expert and in the text, let's say we want to update the title of this. Um, so we already do have a title on the report, but we can create another title here. We'll just say, this is our open sales order chart. And it's really as simple as that. I'm just in creating a basic chart like this. Um, Oren, anything you want to note? Uh, <clears throat> no, just uh, the, the options are, uh, there are a lot of options that are available, very, very similar to the uh, Excel area where you can define a lot of things. And they are former chart and chart expert. So I would uh, go through the data. If it doesn't by default, select your data. This is where you can select your range and the grouping. Um, under the options, there are a lot of labeling options. If you want to show the labels within the chart or not, um, what the legend is going to look like. So you could get rid of the legend and show the labels or show the values here if you wish. Um, and other uh, options is related to uh, what the chart is going to present. Okay, so in this case, I did that, and then I can uh, potentially go ahead to the chart itself and format that uh, chart frame. So there are a lot of drillability, very similar to the Excel kind of charting, uh, how, how to do different things. Uh, me do the chart options and uh, mm -hmm. we can decide what's going to be the labels. If we're going to show values, if we're going to show labels, I'm going to bring it back to the original chart. <clears throat> Beth? <clears throat> Wonderful. So um, at this point, does anybody have any questions about what we've done, any of the steps that we've taken to create um, what we have created so far. And feel free, like Warren said, if you do have questions, um, you can always unmute yourself, you can always put them in the chat, or um, at the end we do have some time for Q&A, so that's possible too. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions, um, so we'll go ahead and move into the next one. Um, another visual that I like to see, and I think it's really helpful, for sales managers um, is a gauge type of KPI. So let's create a new report. Here we can create a blank report. We have our connection already. And for this, we're gonna pull in, let's pull in that OD RDR table again. And we'll pull in the OSLP table. So Oren showed you how to find um, those table names in SAP. So uh, you know by now the ORDR would be the order table. And in the same way that OSLP table is our salesperson table. And now you'll notice also, um, now that we've added another table in here, we have another tab at the top that's shown up. And this is our links tab. So in the links tab, 
um, we have this auto linking turned on. So it's going to automatically create a link between the tables. Um, now in this case, it's linking our sales order table to our salesperson table on SLP code. And that is what you wanna link it on. So you're good there. Um, I always like to check these links. Sometimes uh, it'll add some additional links and maybe you just wanna verify if that's something you want. Um, so now that our links are good, we can just say okay. And these fields have been pulled over right here. And it's pulling in every um, field from each of these tables. So for this one, for our KPI, we're just gonna pull in two fields. Let's pull in this salesperson name uh, from the OSLP table. And then from the ORDR table, table, we're gonna pull in our doc total. So we wanna see, or maybe our sales manager wants to see how our salespeople are doing and what their sales are, are overall. So again, let's view it in print preview and see all of our raw data. Now in the same way that we did with um, our other visualization, we can do that here. So let's say we want to sort it with this record sort expert and let's sort it by SLP name. There you go. So now we have it all sorted there. Um, we don't really need to filter this one unless you do wanna take some salespeople out that you don't want in consideration of, um, you know, of your graphic. Otherwise, in this case, we won't need to use the select expert. Um, but we will go back in and let's group this table just like we did on the last one. So we're gonna open up the groups and we wanna group by SLP name. That's our salesperson name. So now if you see Bill Levine is selling quite a bit, um, but we also have all of our groups here. So now if we go back to the top, just like we did before, we can create this summary and we want to summarize doc total. And like we said, add it to all group levels so that you'll be able to see this summary for each of your salespeople. Now, if we go back to the design, we can hide that line again. And as you're seeing, it's starting to look more and more like what we had created. And that's kind of the goal when you're, um, you know, just like you would do in Excel, you wanna create some summary data to be able to put it in a chart. And um, let's get rid of that group footer, clean it up a little bit so we can suppress this one. We don't really need to drill down in it. I've moved the data out of that. So we'll just suppress it so it doesn't have a drill down. And now we have a concise bit of data here. So again, we'll go to insert and then chart. Let's insert this in our report header and it just um, shows up by default as a bar chart, but we wanna do um, a gauge. So if you look down here, almost all the way to the bottom, we have this gauge chart option and we'll say, okay. Now you probably notice it does look a little bit jumbled when um, we initially put it in there. So let's clean up the labels a little bit, these axes. So if you can see, um, you can click on these axes directly or the, sorry, the label points directly. And let's say format axis label. Now, if you go over to number, um, let's do the abbreviation. Uh, we can preview it here. And the abbreviation in thousands still looks maybe a little busy. So let's go to millions. And that looks a lot better. And actually here, we'll make this a little bit bigger so we can really dig down and see. There we go. So now we have a good visualization of um, each of our sales people in, uh, in comparison to our other sales, sales employees. And then let's just go to the chart expert and we can name this. We'll have our salesperson KPI. So now just like that, you have something that you can use um, in SAP and uh, measure your sales, your salespeople's performance. Um, so, Oren? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Beth. We have a question here. Uh, when you get a chance, can you go over where to access Crystal RPT Builder in SAP? 
also what's the difference between the different types of connections um, and I can try to answer starting with the different types of connections different types of connections are different ways to uh, um, connect to the database uh, all DB is a good way to connect to any SQL database um, the difference is, uh, if I go back to the uh, select expert uh, or database expert, the difference is the way uh, the system is going to connect to uh, to the database. ODBC is slightly different from OLEDB. Um, if you do with the SAP Business One, it will give you the different structure of the SAP table. So, for example, once I uh, select my um, database user, which is normally a SA, um, and then the password, I should be able to see uh, my different databases. And then I'm going to do the manager password here. That will just allow us, once we finish, to see all the tables in the structure of SAP. So different ways to connect to a database because different technologies uh, to connect to the database. Okay. And then the, the second question uh, was related to um, how to open Crystal Reports. So if you have Crystal Reports installed it's normally uh, going to be installed on a terminal server or, or something like that there is the report and layout manager uh, window uh, this will allow you first to import any crystal reports file that you have um, in uh, sap or uh, if you look for example at the sales order design if it's related to a document uh, you could see all the designs here and by clicking edit assuming um, uh, SAP, uh, crystal reports installed on that station it will open that uh, crystal report design. Um, the third uh, item to connect to and, and to preview is uh, using the tools. Um, if you saved uh, that RTP, that RPG file, and, and we're gonna save it now, for example, on the desktop, um, right? And we're gonna call it uh, report three in this case. Uh, now we can go to SAP and decide to preview that, preview external crystal report file. And we're going to choose our uh, file uh, from the desktop, report three. And that will show us how it will look within SAP Business One. And then, of course, uh, double click will get us to the sub report. And then when we sure the report is good and we want to import that, we can go again to the report and layout. Uh, we can do import. We could um, decide where the file is going to be located or where are we going to take it from. In this case, it's going to be our report three from the desktop. We need to decide, is it a layout? of a sales order, sales invoice, PO, for example, things of that nature, or is that a report? In that case, it's a report, and then we can choose where it's gonna be placed within the um, uh, main menu of SAP. We can create uh, new folders here and things of that nature. In that case, I'm gonna put it under sales report, and we're gonna do uh, finish. Once we did that, basically we imported the reports to SAP, um, we need to give authorizations. By default, um, the report is not going to have authorizations other than uh, super users. So if I look at report three, I can now change it. Uh, I can now say um, uh, report three by best or, or whatever other logical name. I can replace it in the different menu. I can have all kinds of printer uh, defaults. I can run it from here if I wish, or after I update, and I can uh, set authorizations from here. So I um, can go to my user and provide uh, my authorization. It's gonna be placed in the authorization under the same uh, menu we decided on. I hope that uh, answer your question. But then we, 
when we go through the sales report now, we could see a report three by Beth, and we can also execute it from here, and that uh, will be available. Uh, one last thing to talk about that Crystal report is the ability to export. When you click on the export, uh, you could save it either as a Crystal reports file, but there are options to save as PDF or as Excel and things of that nature. So you can also export uh, a designed uh, uh, report that uh, already pre-made. All right, so uh, one more thing to uh, look at uh, when um, talking about um, uh, Crystal reports is the parameters and filters. So let's go back to Crystal reports and we're gonna start maybe with a, a new report. Um, we're gonna maybe build, uh, maybe we'll, we'll do two reports. One we'll do filter in this report and then we'll make a, another report and see how um, Crystal reports integrate with that. So we're gonna talk about parameters and tokens. Parameters is a way um, to see, to filter the data. Basically right now we see the salesperson's KPIs for all their history. But normally we'd like to, um, you know, have filters to give the user the ability to run it uh, by date range or to be able to filter by a specific sales employee and, and things of that nature. Okay. So um, I think I lost the control here. There you go. Uh, thank you. So we're going to get out of that and then uh, let's say um, if we want to filter let's say we want to see the transactions between um, dates so the one thing we could do is go to parameter fields as you saw earlier um, Beth was using the select expert to filter any data uh, so she filtered uh, we can say I want to see just the non cancels so I can say Cancelled is equal to uh, no, because I don't want to give them compensation based on uh, cancel the uh, order, refresh data. Now I see different uh, amount. The second thing is I want to run it between dates. I don't want to firm dates. I want a user to choose the date. So I could do parameters new. And this is where we're going to have a lot of options. So one of the options we're going to have is what is the filter name? So let's say the range uh, with N. And then uh, we could have it as a daytime. And normally what you want to select here is static, not dynamic, although Crystal gives us an option to dynamic. Normally everything that we do is directly working with the tables and the database. So it could be static. Uh, we could uh, have any values here, but let's get into the uh, prompt text will be enter date range. And we're gonna have a uh, couple of things to change. Uh, multiple should be false. Multiple value, oh, it's true. There, there is the thing. There you go. It doesn't matter actually the range that I'm choosing here, it's a matter of the dates that I'm gonna choose in SAP. So I'm gonna save it here, go back to SAP, gonna choose the same uh, sales KPI. And then it's gonna give me the date range, which I can do 1116 until uh, today. Okay, and then it will uh, filter the crystal reports exactly in the same way. Now, the, the other thing that we could do with crystal and uh, the, the way they integrated SAP with crystal reports is the ability to build reports that will show us very similar structure to the SAP. So for example, if you wanna query clients, it will give you the options to choose client from to to choose a group of clients, to choose the clients with properties. Uh, same thing with items. 
same thing with warehouse. So all the native um, uh, SAP um, uh, reports, for example, if we run uh, different uh, reports on inventory and, and I want a selection of warehouses, we could have the system show me exactly that structure by location, by warehouse, with the item, with the item uh, groups, item from two properties, things of that nature. So that's what we call uh, token. So let's see how, how that works uh, within uh, Crystal. So let's start here a new report, a blank report. We're gonna bring the table of um, uh, OITM, which is the items table. Uh, so I'm gonna type OITM, bring that to my uh, right side. Now I can see OITM, I can bring different information uh, to the details area like item code, item name, um, on hand, uh, is committed and ordered for example. Okay. I can mark all those fields, move them up. One thing that I'm using quite a bit is the um, uh, formula. Formula is a really easy thing, but it allows you to do calculations. So if I wanna see my availability, I can create availability and then I'm gonna do, okay, what do I wanna see in my availability? I can say I want to show the on hand uh, minus what is committed to clients plus uh, what's on orders from vendors. Save and close. I created another field that is based on other fields. It's a calculated field availability and then I can drag and drop it here. Okay, and then I can do view uh, print preview. It shows me that uh, report. Now let's say I want to select a group of items or item from two and things of that nature. This is where we're going to do a, a parameter uh, again. So, but it's going to be a special parameter. So we're going to do new and in the name, I'm going to give it the name of the parameters I want to have items, I can actually start with a select, uh, but then I can do it, that tells the system uh, or SAP that we're gonna be using token. Um, and then we're gonna do uh, uh, the query, select star from OITM. Okay. And that, that's pretty much it. So let's do prompt with description. Yes, uh, allow multiple values. It's gonna be true. It's gotta be true because we got, are gonna choose multiple uh, items. The script is good and range is good. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna save that uh, report is um, on the desktop is Item availability. Yeah, right. And uh, it's going to be saved on the desktop. And then uh, if we don't use the editing, we're going to do tools preview. Let's see how it looks. And we're going to choose our items availability file. It didn't do what we wanted to do because we didn't do the select expert. Uh, but this is what it's gonna be presenting. It's gonna be presenting the group, the different groups of items, or the items from two, or the items property, or if we wanna do expanded selection criteria, it's gonna give you all the uh, UDFs that are available and things of that nature. So that's a way to relatively easily uh, bring uh, native SAP selection criteria uh, called uh, token. 
Um, the one thing I uh, neglected to do here that I uh, have missed is to use that uh, select expert and to say I want to have item code uh, equals to that uh, parameter. So it will actually do the filtering uh, for us. So we're gonna we're gonna go to our last uh, thing with on the uh, presentation, um, which is uh, to talk about uh, additional um, options like golden arrows, uh, commands, and views. So I think in this uh, session we're gonna have time for the uh, golden arrows, but uh, but we're gonna leave time for questions as well as documentation. So. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to cover the golden arrows. So as I had mentioned, um, you guys are probably familiar with the golden arrows from SAP um, that allow you to drill down into any type of data here. So let's pull in a golden arrow. Um, if you just go to insert, you'll have to save it as a picture file. Um, but I've done that here. And then it's this teeny little box and we can just put it right there. Um, if you open up any existing system crystal report, you'll be able to grab this little image file and just the size that you need. Um, so we have this here now, but the most important part is to actually create that connection. So you'll wanna right click and format that graphic. And in the format editor, we're gonna go over to hyperlink. So we wanna say in the hyperlink type that we're creating a hyperlink to a website. Um, and let's say we want to we want to connect this to the OR or OCRD table so that we can whenever we click on that golden arrow, it'll open up that business partner uh, master data file. So I've copied and pasted it in here. Um, I would recommend doing that just because there are so many little uh, intricacies with what you need to put. But essentially, this is telling or this will tell SAP that we want to create a link with this golden arrow and we want to link it on the OCRD table, which is our card code or our um, business partner code. And then we also want to add a little bit of logic here. So we'll click where that pencil is to add a formula. And I'm going to pull this one in as well. So this is telling it, okay, we do want to link on this OCRD table and we want to link it on card code. So whatever card code we have there, we want to pull it in and link it like that. I think, yeah. And if we save and close, say okay. And now let's save this file as our open sales orders. There we go. And so let's preview it in SAP. Go to our desktop and we'll open our open sales orders. Click OK. And you cross your fingers and then click on our golden arrow and let's see if it opens. There we go. So now we have our business partner master data record. Um, that you're able to drill down in just from your crystal report. So it's really helpful if you do want to see any kind of data that maybe um, is not on your report, but hey, maybe you want to see account balance. You can drill in and see it from there. So any questions about the golden arrow at all? I know it was a little fast, um, but those Additionally, um, all of that logic that we put in there for the golden arrows, that's going to be included in our PowerPoint and um, some documentation as well. So you won't have to memorize that um, or, you know, pause and screenshot it. I guess I should have mentioned that before, but, um, but yeah, that'll all be available so you can start creating your own golden arrows. Cool, thank you, Beth. And and the same thing you can do with drill downs for items, document, things of that nature. And, and we have prepared for you a lot of documentation at the end. Uh, last thing we're gonna talk about is uh, working with commands and views and store procedures, uh, which is more kind of advanced. Uh, let's say I have here a, a simple query. You know, in many queries, you need to do union and sometimes you already have a query that somebody built for you and maybe it's very long and have a lot of details. You wanna take that query and create some visualization on that query uh, or that view. So you could uh, go to your query, copy it, uh, and then go back to, uh, let's create here a new report, go back to uh, Crystal. 
going to create a blank report. And um, when I open, instead of opening the database uh, to select my uh, table, I can in this case add command. And add command is basically add a query. I added query, paste all my um, query here is written in uh, SQL or, or SAP. It's, it will say command. With F2, I can change it or I can edit the, the name, okay? Or edit the command itself if I ever need to add fields or to adjust the query. And then as I do okay, I get that as part of my uh, database uh, field. So I open the command and then I have the type and then I have the doc num, doc number if it's an invoice or a credit memo, uh, the date and uh, any other fields we may wanna uh, take from, from that command or that query. So everything will be available. We can link it also with other tables and uh, then we see all the data and can do uh, everything we did uh, previously. Uh, just on a nutshell, the same thing is available for advanced SQL users to connect with uh, um, views and stored procedures. So views is basically uh, just a way to write what we did here um, and, but instead of writing a command, you can write a, a, a view. So then you can modify that in SQL or for large sets of data, it's better actually to use sort procedures so you don't bring all the tables and all the information and, uh, and the report will be more um, efficient. Uh, but this is for, um, for, for a future uh, training, more advanced crystal reports training, where we can talk more about SQL and, and stored procedures. Um, I see a question uh, from, uh, uh, I see a couple of questions actually. One from Christina, can you drill down uh, to details in a visualization? I'm here. Um, so drilling down to the details you said um, of a sales total, so for that one, probably the best would be um, if you wanted to see the details like we had before we had kind of summarized this data when we had all that raw data. Um, if you're looking to do that, then probably the best would be to, um, to link this here to a sales order. And then you'd actually be able to link right on um, the sales order number and it would open up that sales order so you could see all the details. Any other questions? Um, uh, thanks, Beth. I, I I meant actually on the on the pie chart itself. Oh, if you could sorry, I access think I the details from the pie chart. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so that's actually something I don't know. Orin, do you know if you're able to drill down in the visualization? I believe you can do that with uh, hyperlinking uh, uh, the chart. It's, uh, it's an interesting uh, question, uh, Christina. I, I haven't done it, but uh, I believe uh, we could associate that with a query behind it or some kind of uh, hyperlink. That's a great question. Yeah, I'll that's great. Yeah. Christina is actually a secret uh, Crystal Reports wizard, so she probably already knows the answer. She probably yeah. has a good answer. <laughs> no, we spent we spend quite a bit of time trying to figure out if it's possible, and we haven't come across an answer. So I asked uh -huh. you guys. <laughs> awesome! Yeah, yeah let knew. us let us um look into that and see because that's something I haven't thought about, but that would be great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, so I think let's, uh, if we want to summarize um, what we have done today, and I know it may have been really quick, so we prepared for you a lot of, um, a lot of uh, documentation. So, um, okay. 
There we go. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple of things that we have for you. One is the PB1 user training document. We have a user training document that walks you step by step of everything we've done today and give you actually different exercises. So that will be available and we'll uh, release that uh, next week together with this recording and this presentation. Uh, the full document of how to work with Crystal Reports, the SAP documentation that we're going to be a release of part of this presentation and uh, the full crystal reports uh, dot com, uh, which is a very, very long one. Uh, Google is a great tool. I uh, personally, I learned crystal reports after listening to a similar webinar of half hour. And then everything I want to learn further is going to be in Google. For example, uh, how to create a, um, you know, a formula in crystal reports. So I type crystal reports formula and there are a lot of treasures there, so don't miss it. And if you really wanna start um, building your own reports, this hour is not gonna be sufficient. I really highly recommend to go through the training document that we're gonna be sharing next week. And, um, and, and that's it. Um, Beth, anything to add? Um, I think that's it. I think we've covered, covered everything we wanted to cover. Um, just on our summary, this is uh, what we were intending to cover. Um, we got to touch all of it, although I know we're running a little late on time, but um, I appreciate everyone's questions, all of, um, yeah, all of the, the good stuff today. So um, if you do have any questions at all, we've included both of our emails there. So um, I, both of us are, love Crystal Reports, love working with it. So anything that you're trying to do, um, if you're getting stuck or trying to learn, feel free to reach out um, and we can always share some resources with you and help you out along your way. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, everybody. Have a great uh, rest of your Friday and have a great weekend. Bye. Oh, and it looks like Oren, um,